big occasion. Absolutely. What a game. It finishes Chelsea 4, Manchester City 4. Taking a look at what that means in the Premier League after all the matches we still take place. Uh, City remain top, one point clear uh, for Liverpool who won earlier in the day. We'll talk about that a little later on. But first, let's welcome in uh, Nader Manua. Happy birthday, yeah. Nader. Maybe not the three points that you're hoping for for City. For the big 4 over. <laughs> but isn't it brilliant? <laughs> <laughs> After everything that's happened over the last few weeks with VAR controversies and conspiracy theories, that today was just all about the football and just thoroughly entertained. <sighs> Oh, Dan, 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 Dan. That's very optimistic of you to think that people aren't also still talking about VAR in general. No, I think depending no, on which no, way you want to perceive things. We're not going to talk about it today. Let's just talk about it. People are still thinking about it. We're not going to talk game. about it. We're not going to talk about it, but it was a fantastic game of football, and I wish I could have watched it as a neutral. But I'll be honest, you know, I was rooting for City to do well, so, you know, lots of roller coaster emotions, all that stuff. But in the end, I think there was some real quality out there, but then there were also quite a few mistakes as well. But I think it's a great advert for the Premier League, and I think, you know, Chelsea have been involved in two blockbuster games in the last seven days. And it's good to see that, you know, City found some fighting spirit, and Chelsea looked like a team that maybe we expected, expected they would be at this point in the season. I think they'll be looking up the table thinking they can catch teams I think for City they'll take being top of the Premier League at this point in this international break because after the last one or oh, just before the last one they'd lost to Arsenal and there were more question marks about them as opposed to the feeling they have now which is you know we've got more to come Maybe I'm in an optimistic mood. Yeah. I thought if I was going to chop off it and I talked to you about oh, God, I thought, that Erling Haaland when I thought they were looking at the handball. When Erling Haaland slid do in. Just yeah. don't do and it. Slid, and the ball, was, the ball was behind them and yeah. it was going into the net. And I thought, this is going to take <laughs> VAR to the next stupidity level. I know, I right? know. His arm was actually going to stop the ball going in the net, but luckily they saw... Uh, Would I be too optimistic to say that both teams wouldn't mind the draw in the end? Well, no, but well, once City get that deflected goal at 4-3, oh. OK, there's eight minutes of injury time, but I think Guardiola has to expect this seasoned bunch of professionals to see this game out. Right. And they didn't because they were ragged all game defensively. And maybe that's a little bit down to them and a lot down to Chelsea, who have set themselves a bar, I think. Mm. What do we learn today, Stevie, in particular? That they've got some heart. And, and if they can continue to approach games the way they did from the get-go. I mean, right from the kick-off, every single time they, they got the ball, they went after it as a unit, as a group. And, and that was that... You know, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Manchester City, you have to be brave. Right. And I didn't expect Chelsea to be brave. I thought they'd try and keep it tight and not give too much away. But I'll tell you what, they did the complete opposite. Every opportunity, as I said. Now, you've got, to, you've got to say the Man City coughed the ball up quite a lot. I guess it's a combination of them coughing it up and the pressure that Chelsea were putting on them in the middle of the park. But as I said, once they got it and got after it, I, I agree with Craig with, it, with Sterling and Palmer. I'm not so sure about Jackson. I think Jackson, we saw today that he's not ready. Well, in theory, Nkuku will be back, won't they, after the international well, if, break? Well, if Nkuku does what he's been brought in to do, then that will make a world of difference to this side. Uh, Raheem Sterling looked. Of course, a lot of people are shocked. A lot of people were shocked over that performance we saw from Chelsea. Nobody expected them that they have something like that to prove. By the way, hello guys, welcome back to another video. This is the Football Connect. I'm your host, Sam. And we are going to be doing our, our preview reactions to our review reactions to the Premier League as we listen to the ESPN guys as they try to give us an idea of what they thought of what Chelsea did yesterday, shocking Manchester City and shocking the world. One thing that I can tell you, um, Nedem wanted to bring some VAR calls. I have to say that if we are to talk about VAR, we actually have to question them, especially in the giving them of the Haaland goal. The Holland penalty, I didn't think that was a penalty. So many questions has to be asked about that. I have no idea what exactly where the referee was, the referee thinking, and the Revier are doing nothing on top of that. That just made it worse. That just made it worse. But Chelsea made it a game that City will remember. They forced them, they put so much pressure to a point that Manchester City were making so many errors, so many mistakes, which were causing so much into their performance, into whatever they were trying to create. They struggled and they really did suffocate to create anything meaningful. And that took 
oh, that all came from Chelsea. They put so much pressure into this team that this team was looking for a way out. That tells you how serious this was. It was a game that so many people would talk about. So many people will really have to look back and see how you prepare for a team like Manchester City. One thing that I was really, 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 I really did enjoy so much when I was watching the game is that every loose ball, Chelsea were on it. Every loose ball. So it means that Manchester City had to always keep the ball in their feet. If they lose it, Chelsea has it. And Chelsea were coming for it. And to a point that Manchester City, in, in the mix of trying to fight and get the ball, they started making so much errors which costed Chelsea, which gave Chelsea opportunity to really hurt Man City. And like what Stevie Nico is saying, I think if we are going to learn something important about this game is that the heart of this Chelsea squad is out of this world. What Maurizio Pochettino is now starting to build out of this team is something that is going to live for some time. People are going to talk about for so much long because it was amazing to see that sort of a performance. It was amazing. Anyone who doesn't enjoy football, who does not even like this team, has to give the, he has to give at least some respect over the performance we saw today. Talking about Jackson, I felt like in, in all position we saw this game, Jackson, alongside Moises Caicedo, but Jackson the more the most was the one who really let this team down, this Chelsea squad. Because so much that these others were doing, setting up for him, he was not finishing the chances. And I felt like if he had a little bit, even 10% of his shooting boards, there would have been, this game would have been a different game from how it even ended. That tells you that everyone expected something different. There was a question that was asked here by Dan. He was asking that, do you think that in the end, the team should have, all of the team had accepted that it goes and it ends, uh, like it ends as a draw? And Craig is talking about something interesting. Manchester City, for what we know them, for what they have done in the world of football, them not being able to see this game to an end, it asks more questions of them and their mindset, where they want to go as a team than we actually even expect. This was one game that I will talk about for some time, people. Let me hear what... Uh, Craig is about to say, but when we talk about Ryan Sterling, yeah, you know that guy who's going to Gareth Southgate, two fingers, you know what I mean? At like, the end of the day, you know, but he looked really, I don't know, he looks trim and sharp, and even when he was one on one against Kyle Walker, he was prepared to take Walker on. Uh, and Cole Palmer, I mean, obviously, I've maybe a point to prove. I don't know. I think he's a really good player. He obviously wasn't seen to be good enough long term at City, or they wouldn't have sold him. But he's a great talent. But you know what was noticeable from a Chelsea perspective? We saw under Potter and even under Tuchel where they had some success was the, the build-up play was a lot of possession but, but quite slow. Mm. I think the no, noticeable difference we're starting to see and certainly we saw today under Pochettino was when they won it back, they got forward a lot quicker. Pacey, right. Right, yeah. They were a lot pacier. Before you knew it, they were at the City back four, they were on the edge of the box, they were getting balls in the box and people forward. And it's almost like Pochettino wants to speed the game up. They did that today, yeah. and they got four goals for it. And I'll tell you what, City did not look comfortable at all. No. Every single time they, Chelsea went after them, you felt as though they might get something. Yeah, what was it about today in particular, Nathan, that, to use Craig's word, that, that saw that City defence look so ragged? Um, I think it was that front foot approach from Chelsea, and I think... One thing that maybe Chelsea struggle with in other sorts of games is teams they'll play against. They'll maybe take more of a backward step, so they've got more players to break down. But I think Pochettino had seen from the way City play that if you can get the ball off them, there's a chance for a quick transition. And I think with the likes of Palmer, with Sterling, with Jackson, with Gallagher up a bit higher, they can really try and push the tempo and make the other team uncomfortable. And there were lots of opportunities and times, you said, where City were ragged in terms of their defending. I think it's fair to say the same was also true for Chelsea in certain parts of the game as well. But I think this is, this is good. And there was a stat that came up in the game. I don't know if it was on your feed over there. 
But City have averaged the most possession of a team this season at 62% per game. But Chelsea were in second. So all of a sudden it explains why they wanted to get on the ball, the way they wanted to approach the game. They were never going to take a step back. And I think Pochettino's given them a good play game plan. I think that's two games in a row that he's done that. It was exciting. Cole Palmer for points to prove Sterling scoring his first goal against City now. Those two guys were very amped. Jackson, you know, he was keeping City honest at least. And I think it was, a, it was a fantastic game because both sides really wanted to go for it and wanted to go for the win. And I think a draw is probably a fair result overall, but I think both sides will feel a bit disappointed because they had moments where they had the lead and you thought maybe something could come from this. Uh, talk to me about... Can, I, oh, I, just, I just want to just uh, get Cole Palmer, obviously, Ned. You'd have seen him develop uh, throughout City before he made that move in the summer. Just tell me a little bit about him. I think, to be honest, I always thought he was good, but... I did, never thought it was so good that he should play instead of anyone that's been in City's front line or in midfield for the last few years. But again, this just goes to show sometimes if you find yourself in the right place and you get given confidence, then you can really show your ability because one of his coaches, Jordan Lescott, for the under-21s last year, he always used to say how Cole Palmer is an exceptional talent. And when the money came in from Chelsea, I think the £42.5 million, pounds, there were lots of people that raised eyebrows thinking, well, of course you've got to send him down there because that's so much money for someone that's not proven. But for him, he said, that's going to be a good deal for them. And you can see in the way that he plays, the way that he carries himself now at Chelsea, he's confident, he feels like he's the guy, he's the man who's playing week in, week out. He's played more minutes for Chelsea this season in the league than he played for City all of last season in the league. So you can see he's comfortable and he's getting a chance to show his potential in a style and a side that suits his, it suits his ability. So fair play to him. He steps out there and he's the main man like... Cole Palmer's taken a penalty in the 92nd minute or whatever of a game against his former side as a 20-year-old, having Raheem Sterling playing there, who he's played with for the last five, six years, who would never have let him take a penalty before. I think it's clear to say that, or clear, clear to see that upon leaving City, it's not about him being an academy graduate anymore. He's the new signing for Chelsea that's there to help them achieve their goals this season, and he's playing in that manner, and it's a, it's a great thing to see. He takes, it's the way that he takes the ball for a run. He sort of glides across the surface. He's, he's a very talented young guy. Mm. And he went, and just before, it was late in the second half, he went in a great run, didn't he? Right through the middle of the yeah, Chelsea yeah. defence. Should have scored, though. Yeah, he probably should have scored. He got a little knock all day. He's hypercritical <laughs> here. Well. Shouting uh. at, uh, shout at the TV again. But he did, he did get a couple of nudges that just sort of put him off a little bit. But uh, I think I heard John Champion in the commentary say, uh, Chelsea hadn't scored against Man City since the Champions League final. Um, I said that on that. yesterday's show, actually. Did you? Well, yeah, oh, I was not John Champion. I, I must, not, there, I must yeah. not have been listening. Yeah, you were too busy saying, because <laughs> I said it was going to be a draw and you shouted at me for that. Well, you got lucky. <laughs> Let's be honest. It took a late win, a late equaliser. <laughs> I'm, I'm with Stevie, and I, you know I've said before on the programme that, to me, City have a lot more problems down the left-hand side than they do on the other side. Right. Guardiola's a good player, but he's not, he's not a fullback. And the way he got his body shape uh, there was just all wrong. It was just all wrong. And he's not the only one. Aki's been put out there. Uh, you know, Kanji's been out there. It's a little, I wouldn't say it's a problem area for him, but it's certainly a, maybe a little bit of a weak point in this City team, that left-hand side, because we know on the right side generally, uh, for general rule of thumb, Kyle Walker is just... Yeah, he's almost unbeatable as a defender. And they're all centre-backs that he's trying at full-back. Mm -hmm. Centre-backs hate playing full-back. Right. The, 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 the comfort they have in the middle of the park and having players around them is part of why they love playing where they do. So when you stick a, a, a centre-back wide, all of a sudden he's, he feels exposed and they hate it. And he's finding that out because every single one he's tried, they've all struggled a bit. Do you remember the... It is really interesting what these guys are talking about, you know, under trying to give us an idea of how Sterling really performed. Because one thing that we can all agree with is that Southgate has to, something has to be wrong with him if he cannot see the star Sterling is. Especially with such a performance playing against the biggest team in the, in the world at the moment. City are recognized as the biggest team in the world. And if you can see somebody in Sterling who can come up 100%, gun blazing, causing problems, and you see him not selected for England, it's just crazy. The other thing that was said was he was not afraid to take Car Walker on a run. Car Walker, I think if you could ask him, he would tell you that he had one of these worst performances today. Because he had somebody who was willing to take on him one on one, and that caused so much problems. And it was that you could see that they were a little bit rigid and they could not keep up 
with the pressure and the speed that Chelsea were putting on. Something that was mentioned by Craig, which I think is very important, is that, oh, I think this was mentioned by uh, the, the City supporter that he said, as much as people talk about how City really struggled about Chelsea, but if you look in the Premier League, the second most team with the position who enjoys controlling the ball is Chelsea. So seeing them trying to take advantage of that, trying to take the ball from Chelsea City, it should not really come as a surprise because they're already known for doing that. They're even second in line and they showed that today in the game that they wanted the ball. They were fighting for the ball so that they have control of the ball and City could not keep up with that. That was where some of the problems of City came from. The other one was, let's talk about Cole Palmer. This kid had, 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 had something to prove. He wanted to prove, like what Nedem was saying, he was always told to be one of the best. Of course, maybe City did not see him as a star. Guardiola did not really give him the chance. And when he got the Chelsea side chance, he ran in and he took it with all. He believed in himself more than the team. Because, for example, we can talk about the likes of Phil Ford and who are comfortable to be on the bench and hope that that time comes. But Copa was like, nope, I'm leaving this club. I'm going to play football because I know that I deserve more and I can prove it to anyone who doesn't believe me. And that's exactly what they did. And he's now at Chelsea. In the last minute, the highest pressure point of any penalty you can ever take, having the confidence to score a goal against your former side, the people where you have been learning from, like you have been your seniors, it's 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 it takes guts, and you have to put some respect on Palmer because I think he proved something to us that we had not really seen that he is a force of nature. He is willing to fight to the very end. And I was really impressed with that. Of course, there were some points when he got some chances, like Stevie White is saying that he should have scored, but there were so many things that were happening, but you could see that this guy is really, really amazing. Now let's talk about what Mauricio Pochettino has done so well. Craig is mentioning that under Thomas Tuchel, no, under Graham Porter, when you'd expect... This Chelsea side, when they were playing so good by those moments, when you'd expect them to move so fast, you would see that they would slow the ball down, they would lose the energy, they will always stop. And that could not really show us exactly what this team was capable of. But today, when the ball was just coming from the goalkeeper, or maybe when City was just losing it in their side, very quickly, it was already in the city side, putting pressure on the center backs. And that was one of the most amazing things we saw from this team. And also now we are seeing some of the weakness of City. Because we have now actually seen that one of their weakest, uh, weakest side is the Govardio side. Their left side is the weakest of them all. And I think Chelsea managed to expose it. So much that even Walker was trying to help out and he also he was exposed. I actually thought that maybe they exposed the whole defense because we saw that City cannot deal with a player who actually goes to them head on. They cannot copy with the pressure. The pressure is too much for them. They always try to by all means to waste the chance to do what and do what. But when the player is going straight and coming against them, they struggle to get anything, even to create anything meaningful. And that is so, was very important to learn. And I think we can still learn more and see, see more from this time. But it's going to be exciting to see how that happens. Steven Nicole is telling us how every center back had to play as a wing back. And the fact that there are those center backs are playing as wing backs, that just tells you that there is really, really trouble in paradise. Anyway, let's see the last part of this video so that we can give you my final thoughts over the performance. The game at Old Trafford, which they won easy in the end, it was in the first half, United's chances all came from pretty much glad they all been, been sloppy on the ball. Mm. I mean, we're not quite at the stage of putting Bernardo Silva back there <laughs> like, like, he did, like he did last year. But it is maybe some food for thought, that position. Uh, Nathan? No, I think... 
I think that is fair. It's not obviously not as strong as that right side. And I think at times, you know, when I see Vardy, I think, oh, this is a really good player and his ceiling's very, very high. But then there are other moments, as was the case in the derby for that first period, where you remember, like, this is a 20, 21 year old in a new league for the first time. And I think some of those little mistakes and little bits of naivety, I think he will get better with that. I think he's capable of playing the left side of a three if it's going to be in terms of an attack. But at the end of the day, I think as long as you're making a lot of mistakes when you're younger, you'll be able to grow out some of those going forward. Because for City, in terms of what they want to try and achieve come the end of the season, you know, they can't have slip-ups like they were making today. Now, Chelsea obviously have given other sides around them a big head start, considering the way they started ask. this season. Don't ask. No. 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 Let's just no. Shut up. Let's just take a look at the odds regarding a top four player. Oh, God, here we go. It's happening. Right. Here it comes. <laughs> one result. Yep. As, uh, well, they beat Spurs 4 1. They're like men. Lost they four goals at home. Do you remember when we had that graphic up in this horrible run and we were like, they're going to get four points from the next eight games? Well, how many? I didn't say four. Uh, so they currently sit on 16 points. That's 10 adrift of Spurs. They are 5 to 1, which is quite short considering United are 9 to 2. Given the groans and the moans, you, 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 you're not on board this whatsoever. Well, listen, we, it, from, where the, from what they were producing to what we saw today, then, OK, if you want to spend the day giving them praise, let's do that. Yeah. But if you want to look at the big picture, yeah. they lost four goals at home. Right. Against, you, against, you, you against, mean, against a treble winning side. But, but they lost four goals at home. Right. I don't care who they're playing against. They did score four, they, they did score four well, goals but that, but that's without Nkunku as but well. But that's the positive. Right. They scored four goals. Right. But hold on a second. When you lose four goals at home... Yeah. I'll put it a different way. Mm -hmm. You scored four goals at home yes. and you still don't win the game. Yeah. That's not good. No. Oh, what do you mean it's not good? <laughs> well, you scored four goals I mean, at but home you, I mean, but you don't yeah. win the game. No, but... It, what part, what part of that is well, great? You just said Chelsea were good today. I'm just, if you want to go that route and, and praise them, yeah, but you've got to look at the big picture and they, they lost four goals at home. Right. No, yeah, that's where they are. Teams that, listen, teams that they want to be in the top four can't afford to lose four at home. I don't care who you're playing. 25, did they, did 20... they lose four at home? <laughs> yeah, I think Thiago, so. He's 39, Thiago Silva. Yeah, yeah. I mentioned well, that as well. Oh, well, there you go. Well, it ended. That's not a positive either, is it? Wow. Well, he's doing all right. Oh, <laughs> well, he's doing great. It's, it's all right. It's 25 matches to go, Nadem. What do you reckon? Two goals a day. So I think they'll be in the Champions League next season, but I think it'll be because you can fit, you'll potentially be able to finish fifth this year. Oh. And I think if you look at it from that context at the moment, is Villa that are in fifth. Villa are doing very, very well. They've won 13 home games in a row. Is this what we think they're going to be doing for the rest of the season? I'm not 100% sure. So I think Chelsea will be in the mix around that fourth and fifth position but likely finish fifth. And I, I, I'll be honest, I'm a Chelsea truth. I think they're good. I, it, it's agonising. I think their biggest problem has been not scoring goals because defensively, overall, they've been fine. But I think they're going to do it and I think they'll be fifth and be in the Champions League next year. But they have to keep that going, don't they? <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's all very well beating a nine-man spurs and putting this kind of performance up. But, but the, the international breaks come at a bad time for them. Right. right. Two good perform one good performance against nine men and one really good performance against the best team in England, the best team in Europe, right? They'd want to play again three, four days later and keep this going. Right. But that's the big question. Can can they keep it going or are they going to revert back to the team that that plays okay and just misses a, a bundle of chances? Yeah, yeah, and Kunko's coming back. But Newcastle will get stronger, Villa are still strong. Uh, who the hell knows what's going to happen with Man United? So it's not, it's not going to be that easy. I don't think they're going to make it. Nope. City still going to win the league? No massive red flags today going forward? No, I think, I think you have to question when, when you lose four goals away from home. Uh, I think you do. I think, I think the biggest question, if I'm uh, is, is Pep, is the amount of times they gave the ball away is not like them. Mm. And, and this is not the first game this season that's happened. That would be a little bit of a worry. Okay, people, so let's get it to the end now. As we were talking about City, what if they want to achieve greatness like what they did last season? Games like this should not they should not be losing footing. And I think Nadiam really made it so clear that they should not be finding themselves losing their footing. These are the moments they need to focus. These are the moments they need to show us that they have something to prove. What we were seeing today, if they have any intention of getting something at the end of the season, there should be direction over what they're doing. And I think it's very important that they really highlighted that part. 
the odds of finishing top four or top five let's call it the champions league position for chelsea it looks like now they're higher and they could actually manage to finish in this position and i think steve nicole is just just trying to be steve nicole is really explaining that if we really look at this in the other way they've just conceded four goals at home and that it's not supposed to happen whether you are facing which type of an opponent you have to prove that you have the upper hand at your own home so it's not really such a such of a good side if you are looking for that positivity but yeah there's so much to learn but for Chelsea to finish in the Champions League, they just have to make sure that they are on, to, on number five. And the team that is on number five is Aston Villa. Can they continue with that same form? Can they? We are already seeing some other teams going down like Chelsea, like Tottenham Hotspurs. So can they take advantage of that and actually start moving up top? Even the ones who are just there, they need to be careful because it could be a different could be a different game and after this amazing performance one thing that craig really explained which i felt like it was very very spot on was when he talked about how the international break has come at the wrong time for this chelsea team because usually when you have worked so hard to perform like this you build the chemistry and usually when you go astray or you move away that chemistry is destroyed so it's it's interesting it's interesting if they are going to be able to continue after the international break with the lot of the, the break that they're going to get it's going to be exciting to see will city win the league are there any red flags from this you know at the moment yes they are red flags the questions has to be asked like what steven nichols saying but can we say can they win the league that is a question that needs so much clarity in terms of looking at who's coming to take over because yeah it's not that easy but anyway i felt like today was a game where we saw yesterday where we saw the best of where chelsea are going what they are capable of doing especially under Maurizio pochettino what he's working on and what he's building and we saw them fight to the very end it was exciting football i don't want to lie to you i enjoyed this game and i'm hoping that we keep seeing this amazing amazing performance like today do me a favor click the like button subscribe to the connect let me know your thoughts in the comment section what did you think of this analysis what did you expect of city and did they shock you did they surprise you and where do you see them going next after especially one of the best performance we saw today i want to know in the comment section click the like button subscribe to connect we're out peace